We're going to continue our study of proof using induction. In this case, we're going to look at a couple of proofs of inequalities. Let's take a look at how to prove an inequality using mathematical induction. Here I'm trying to prove that n is less than 2 to the n for all n that are positive integers. So just as I did before, I'm going to let p of n represent whatever I'm trying to prove, which is in this case, n is less than two to the n for all n that are positive integers. Then I'm going to start with my basis step. Remember the basis step is just showing whatever the lowest value is, and because I'm dealing with positive integers, um, that would be one. So I'm going to show that p of one is true. So one is less than two to the first which would be p of one. One is less than two to the first. So one is less than two to the first is two. One is less than two, that is true. So I've shown the basis step. Now I have to show the inductive step. And of course the inductive step says, assume pk, show that it implies p of k plus one. So my inductive hypothesis is exactly what p of n is, except with a k every single time. So that's k is less than two to the k. And then again, I always include the show. What do I need to show? Well, I need to show p of k plus one, so I'm going to take my inductive hypothesis and replace k with k plus one. So k plus one is less than two to the k plus one. So that's what I have for what I'm trying to show and what I can say is true, which is my inductive hypothesis. So now I'm going to go back to my inductive hypothesis. K is less than two to the K. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to make it the left side match what I want to show. So I'm just gonna add one to each side. Now, here's the tricky part, and this is the part you're either going to love or you're going to hate with a fiery passion most people hate it with a fiery passion. Because it's an inequality, we're not bound by the same rules of an equation. They don't have to be equal to one another. If I replace something in, equation, in an equation, whatever I replace has to be equal to what I've replaced. If I replace something in an inequality, all I have to do is make sure that the inequality is still true, that it still holds. So for instance, and this is totally going to feel like cheating, I know that one is less than two to the k for all k's that are positive integers because I've already shown it for one and all of the values after that are just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I know that this is true. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, that is less then two to the k, and then instead of one, I'm going to replace it with two to the k. Now, how can I do that? Because one is less than two to the k, so it's okay for me to do that because I'm not breaking any mathematical law. I'm replacing one with something that's greater than that and saying, hey, this inequality still holds. So again, you might be thinking, that's totally cheating, but this is how a proof by inequality works, is now I've got k plus one on this side, and on the right side, I have two k plus two k, which is essentially two two k's, which is, can you guess, two to the k plus one. So again, you might be really upset right now and think, well, where did she even come up with that? And again, it's just a matter of practice. And again, that's where this comes in. I want to know where I'm headed so I know what kind of math magic I need to pull to make this thing work. Let's look at one more proof of an inequality. And again, you may hate these and I totally understand, but this one we're trying to prove that two to the N is less than N factorial. 
for all n's that are integers and greater than or equal to 4. So that's going to come into play when I do my basis step because of course my lowest or least value is 4. So I'm going to start by saying let p of n represent that 2 to the n is less than n factorial. Then I'm going to do my basis step and my basis step is that the least value is true. So in this case, that's p of 4. So 2 to the 4th, is that less than 4 factorial? 2 to the 4th is 16. Remember, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. So is 16 less than 24? Yes, it is. Then I'm going to do my inductive step. And for my inductive step, recall that I'm going to assume pk and show that it implies p of k plus 1. So we'll start with my inductive hypothesis, which is whatever p of n is, but with the k instead. So 2 to the k is less than k factorial. And what do I want to show? I want to show that I can replace k with k plus 1, and that still holds. So how do I do that? I start with my inductive hypothesis. 2 to the k is less than k factorial. Now, what am I going to do to each side? Remember that typically what I'm doing is I'm doing whatever I can to the left side of the equation to make it look like what I want to show. I'm trying to get to 2 to the k plus 1. So I'm actually going to multiply by 2 on each side. So hopefully we recall with our rules of exponents that if I have 2 to the first and I have 2 to the k, because I have the same base, the left side now becomes 2 to the k plus 1. I can just add those exponents. Now on the right side, I have k fact, well I have 2 times k factorial, 2k factorial, which is okay, but keep in mind what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to k plus 1 factorial. So again, this is the part that drives a lot of people crazy, is the only rule is I have to preserve the inequality. So if I can replace 2 with something greater than 2, then I'm okay. As long as that's not less than 2, that would be breaking the law, mathematical law. So what I'm going to look at is where am I trying to get to? I'm trying to get to k plus 1 factorial. So can I say that 2 is less than k plus 1? Or maybe it would make more sense to you to say that k plus 1 is greater than 2. Now, why do I want that to be? Well, I need to, I need to replace 2 with something greater than 2, and I'm going to use k plus 1, and do you believe me that k plus 1 is greater than 2? Well, keep in mind, k is 4 or greater, so this is going to be 4 plus 1, or 5 plus 1, or 6 plus 1, so all of those are greater than 2. So I am safe to replace 2 with k plus 1. So that means now I have 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 times k factorial. So am I where I need to be? Well, let's think about I have k plus 1 and then I have k factorial and if you'll keep in mind k factorial would be k times k minus 1 etc and I would keep reducing by 1 all the way down to 1 because that's what factorial is all about. So what this tells me is this is actually equal to k plus 1 factorial. So now I can say from here that 2 to the k plus 1 is less than k plus 1 factorial, which is what I wanted to show. Up next, we're going to continue to look at proofs by induction. In the next section, we're going to look at divisibility.